The 50th anniversary of the matriculation of black students at Georgia Tech is a significant milestone and achievement. And I want to thank everyone for joining us in this celebration and to urge you to continue to believe in the journey. Let's take a journey back in time to September 1961. Those were violent times. John Kennedy was in his first year as president. You screw your courage to the sticking place, and you don't worry about fear. Um, you worry about getting the job done. And the big national news was the civil rights movement in the American South. And we're picketing, sitting in, marching for change and elimination of the desegregation policies of the city. Georgia Tech was scheduled to begin classes that fall on September 27th. Freshmen had arrived a full week before for orientation, Rats Week, that was normal. What was not normal was that the eyes of the local, regional, and national press were watching very closely. They were watching closely because three African Americans had been admitted. Ford Green, Ralph Long Jr., and Lawrence Williams. The first day on campus, we came into the administration building, and the three of us were shepherded in. Uh, we had uh, the state patrol escorted us everywhere we went. The president had done something very interesting, which was to shut down campus. My first math class, actually there was a fight. I would never remember the student's name that intentionally tripped me up so that I could fall. And of course, we both ended up in the dean's office. They carried themselves with great dignity. They were well-dressed, they were well-mannered, they were well-spoken, and they did an excellent job of lowering the expectations of problems that people expected from them. Tech made it very well known that uh, they would not have any problems with their student body, and um, so everybody respected that. But uh, we were just neglected. I mean, we were just there, you know, uh, you go to class, you go home. There were um, some people, obviously, who resented us uh, being here, and others not only accepted, but also uh, supported us. We were receiving threats. We did get phone threats. And uh, things of the order of, if you show up on campus today, you're not gonna go home, you're not gonna make it home today. Well, I faced that with demonstrations in downtown Atlanta. You never know if you're gonna go home from that anyway. In fact, a lot of times I think I was going, as we say, day by day, week by week. And tomorrow was not even a dream. It was just like, hope I make it. Um, came in, um, enrolled and filled all the paperwork out. And they assigned us to the Southern Block. So all, the, all of our classmates were from the South. I think they probably did that because the, they would be more tolerable, believe it or not, of, of, of us being there with them. And uh, we began to study. When I was an undergraduate here in the early 80s, I was here from 81 to 85, if you had had a dinner where you celebrated the academic success of African-American students, uh, there would be a handful of students in the room who had the requisite GPAs to be uh, recognized. But when you go to that ceremony these days, you have hundreds of African-American students who've been successful. The most important thing about the first is that there's a second, those who follow you. So you want to be able to talk about what happened and why it happened and the benefits you learned and how the kids can you motivate the kids to take another step. I don't know what the numbers were, but there were very, very few black engineers graduating anywhere. And uh, Dr. Pettit saw this as a place that should be producing minority and female engineers. So he went about aggressively building bridges to Morehouse, Clark, Spellman, particularly. The next time I thought about it, Georgia Tech was graduating more black engineers than any other school in the world. 
I think role models are important today and they've always been important. Uh, I think it was former Surgeon General Joyce Lynn Elders who said, you can't be what you can't see. So as we continue into the next 50 years, it's important for us to have role models at all levels uh, of the Georgia Tech community. I think that if we all look for those good things in people and we work together and we help each other through mentoring and everything else that we can get there. I know that we can get there. The Georgia Tech Black Alumni Organization was chartered in 2005 and it was through a great effort and initiative of the Alumni Association. It comes under the heels of another organization which was somewhat of its predecessor, the MAC Committee or the Minority Affairs Committee. For me, the phrase believing in a journey is recognizing Dr. King's dream of everyone being equal, everyone having the same opportunities, and then realizing that all of us in the Georgia Tech community have to move it forward. It's an opportunity to encourage those to walk in my footsteps, you know. Just keep walking, don't stop. If Dr. King would see Georgia Tech as it is today, he would say that my dream is being fulfilled at Georgia Tech. Uh, it's not completed, but it's certainly being fulfilled and they're on the right track. You've got to believe that you can make this happen. You've got to believe that you are important, you are relevant, and what you're doing right here and now is going to make a difference. They paved the way for me to be where I am today. And I'm really proud of following their footsteps because without them, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be given this opportunity. Georgia Tech has brought so much good into my life, and really, I have them to thank for it. You're creating a path for, for, for as they say, children yet born. Perhaps the biggest challenge confronting us in terms of diversity in the future is to try to understand and communicate how important it is to this institution how important diversity is in terms of how it impacts the institution, how it impacts our lives, and in particular, how it can impact the quality of our lives. There's a plaque attached to a brick wall, ill-kept, hard to read, people pass by. All it says is Harrison Square in honor of Georgia Tech's sixth president. It doesn't say anything about him making a tough decision when it would have been easier to do otherwise. It doesn't say anything about the courage of the three students who matriculated or the courage of the 13 who applied. But when you think about it, there's a lot of courage in that little strip of green. And there are benches, and I want you to go and I want you to sit there and think about the legacy of 61 and all those who came after. And I want you to think about courage and the meaning of it in 61, in 71, 81, 91, and in your own life. And ask what it can mean and what you can do to take the legacy of 61 and pass it on to the next generation. We stand on the shoulders of many before us, and we are obligated to God to become new shoulders. <laughs>